Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. I'll be somewhere singing for my Lord. I'll be somewhere singing. I'll be somewhere singing. I'll be somewhere singing for my Lord. I'll be somewhere singing. I'll be somewhere. Singing, I'll be somewhere, singing for my Lord. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, Somewhere praying to my Lord. I'll be somewhere praying. I'll be somewhere preaching. I'll be somewhere giving to the Lord. I'll be somewhere praying. I'll be somewhere. Preaching, I'll be somewhere giving to my Lord. We have declared this month the month of greater harvest, and it shall be so for you and your family in Jesus' name. Amen. The topic of our message this morning is follow me. And I will make you fishers of men. That was the instruction that Jesus Christ gave to Peter in Matthew chapter 4, verse 18 to 19. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting their net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Then straightway left their nets and followed him. Today, God is speaking to somebody, Follow me. And I will make you. Anytime there is an invitation from Jesus Christ for us to do something and we obey, we can be sure that it will end well. And in verse 21, and going from on from thence, he saw two other two brethren, James the son, the, the son of Zebed, and John his brother in a ship with Zebed their father mending their nets and he called them and they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him that was very very tough i mean in yoruba tradition you can't be walking with your father in the farm and somebody say follow me and then you just leave your father alone to continue with the work and you follow that person without knowing that person before but there's something about jesus when he calls, there's a need for us to obey. The song we sang this morning says, Where he leads me. But the original song says, When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer. When he calls me, I will answer, I'll be somewhere. So that was how that song was originally sung. 
but I removed it a little bit today to when he leads me, I will follow. Jesus Christ is a good leader. So the dialogue I was having with the Lord yesterday was the word follow. What does it mean to follow? How long should we follow? What do we need to follow Jesus? In this month of greater harvest, God wants us to follow him. Follow him wherever he leads, knowing fully well that at the end of it all, we shall be blessed. The word follow means to respond to an invitation. But if we look at the acronym of follow, we have F, we have O, uh, F, we have O, we have double L, we have O, and we have W. So making about uh, one, two, three, four, five, six letters that formed that word follow. And so the first one is the F, which we can term or interpret as friendship. Jesus is calling us to a life of friendship with him. In James chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Hallelujah. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the, the friendship with the, of the world is enmity with God? Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. So when God called Peter and Andrew, James and John and the rest of them, he called them unto friendship with him. And in the book of John chapter 15, hallelujah, verse 15, it says, Henceforth I called you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord is Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. A friend is somebody that you can trust. You can rely on. That is not going to be hiding the truth from you. It's not going to be hiding certain things from you. There are certain people, they have information that can benefit you. But because they are not your friend, they will hide it from you. But your friend will tell you the things that will make for progress in your life. The thing that will help you to make progress, your friend will tell you. He will bring in some certain secrets that nobody else knows and share it with you because he's your friend so that you can make progress and succeed in the things that you have laid your hand on. That is who Christ is to us when he calls us, when he called us to follow him. He wants us to be his friend People he can share the secret of his father with and then be able to share with them the dividend and then the wealth that is actually uh, hidden in the common wealth of God's provision and blessing. And he will not hide anything from us that will, that will make our lives to be better. In the book of James chapter 2, verse 23, we find and it the scripture was fulfilled. And the scripture was fulfilled. Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him, was for, imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. And he was called the friend of God. His righteousness was imputed. I mean, his, his trust in God was imputed for him. His belief in God was imputed for him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. Please help me read Isaiah 48 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 8. God is calling us into a life of friendship with him. Friendship with God. 41 verse 8. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 8. For thou Israel art my servant, Jacob whom, Jacob, whom I, have chosen, the seed of Abraham, the whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. 
It was the level of friendship that Abraham developed with God that made God to visit him on his way to, uh, to Sodom and Gomorrah. And in the book of Genesis chapter 15, we saw what transpired there. Genesis chapter 15 and verse 6. Hallelujah. Amen. God was going to go and destroy a place. And God was saying concerning Abraham, and he believed God and it was counted for him for righteousness. He believed God. It was counted for him for righteousness. And later on, God was saying concerning Abraham that will he do something without just sharing it with his friend, with Abraham? Would a man do a thing without sharing it with his friend? Abraham was a man that developed friendship with God that God can, be, can also share with him the secret of the things he wants to go and do. So God is calling us as worshippers to understand that we can develop friendship with God. A friend is somebody that you want to be with all the time. A friend is somebody that you can trust. A friend is somebody that can be there for you. A friend is somebody that has your back, that will not stab you at the back. A friend is somebody that you can, you can lean on. A friend is somebody you can trust and believe in. And Jesus Christ is that friend. And so when he calls us to follow him, he wants us to understand that he's calling us to a life of friendship with him. The same thing with God. Abraham was called by God to live where he was, to where God would show him. And he obeyed and followed the Lord. And as they went on on that journey, they developed that friendship every day to the point that Abraham always desired the fellowship of God all the time. And so God came to a point that Certain things he wanted to do, even on earth, he will come through Abraham and share with him. And then eventually, of course, God wanted to bless the entire families of the earth. Who else could he find? He found his friend, and then he made a covenant with him and said to him, through you, the, the entire families of the earth will be blessed. There's a point you enter into friendship with somebody that can trust you with everything. I mean, can, can you imagine God say concerning Abraham, that I know that he will train his children in the way of the Lord. So God had confidence in him. Abraham had confidence in God. And God had confidence in him. So we may not finish this whole acronym today. It's something we are not going to rush. Maybe we'll just lean on and stick on one or two of these uh, letters today. God really wants us to understand that he needs us to be his friend. As much as we need him to be our friend. So when we hear that word, follow me and I will make you, a lot of things are really, really inside that one letter, inside that one follow. A lot of things are there. Friendship is there. And Christ is calling us to a life of friendship with him and friendship with one another. Friendship with one another. You know, in a church like this, God did not call us to follow him just on our own to just walk all, all by ourselves. He called us to a fellowship of friendship. He wants us to be friend one to another. There's something about friendliness. It casts away fear. It takes away doubt. You are so confident that you can eat in your friend's house. You are confident that when your friend gives you water, you don't have to begin to bind and loose before you take that water. When your friend asks you to go out with him, you are not afraid that it's going to sell you to people, to kidnappers. So you have that confidence in your friend that you are protected in his company. You are, you, you are, you are covered. You can, you, you know, your life is safe. Your information is tight. Even among husbands and husbands and wives sometimes, there's no friendship. Some wives can't trust their husbands. Some husbands can't trust their wives. Because there's no friendliness. Some pastors can't trust their congregation members. Some congregation can't trust their pastors. Because we have not come to understand that when there's a calling from Jesus Christ in our lives to follow him, the first place is be the begins is friendship. 
Can two work together except they agree? Let us begin to see that there's a need for us to develop friendship in the house of God. Christ called us to be his friend. His friends. That is a major call. Number two, we can find in that friendship is found in the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 23. It's not only calling us to friendship, it's calling us to a faithful lifestyle with him. He is faithful to us and he wants us to be faithful to him. And he wants us to be faithful to one another. Parents to be faithful to children. Children to be faithful to their parents. Husband to be faithful to the wife. Wife to be faithful to the husband. Pastor to be faithful to the congregation. Congregation to be faithful to the pastor. And all love. Members to be faithful to one another. Faithfulness. Matthew chapter 25 verse 23. Please read. His Lord said unto him. His Lord said unto him. Well done. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler. I will make you ruler. Over many things. Over many things. Enter thou. Enter thou. Into the joy of thy Lord. Into the joy of thy Lord. Faithfulness is required in stewardship. Faithfulness is required in stewardship. No matter how task, tasking or burdensome the task that God has given to you to accomplish, if you are faithful in it, God will reward your faithfulness. God rewards faithfulness. God wants us to be faithful, full of faith, but to live a faithful life. Let us be faithful in all that we do. The last one about the F, because it's in three parts, is fruitfulness. That same F, that is friendship, produces faithfulness and then produces fruitfulness. Our friendship with God makes us to be fruitful. Our friendship with Christ brings fruitfulness in our lives. That is why this month of September, you are going to cry unto God. God, make me fruitful unto you, unto all good works. In the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 8 to 9. For he that sweat to his flesh. For he that sweat to his flesh. Shall of the flesh reap corruption. Shall of the flesh reap corruption. For he that sweat to the spirit. But he that sweat to the spirit. Shall of the spirit. Shall of the spirit. Reap life everlasting. Reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well doing. Let us not be weary in consistently sowing with well doing. For in due season, For in due season we, shall reap, we shall reap if we faint if we not. Any time there is a sowing, any time there is a planting, the expectation is that there's going to be a time of harvest, a time of reaping. And the Bible says there was so everything a man sows, that's the same thing is going to reap. So fruitfulness is part of the benefit of the call. God is going to bless the works of our hands. You know, sometimes you labor and you labor, you are almost tired. I remember many years ago, we used to have a program we called Victory Praise in our ministry every two weeks. We started our program on the Sakaway pits in our house. And one day I was in my office I was reading through the scriptures, I was meditating, and God told me, Bola, do you know that? And each time we are on that soccer we pit praising God, part of it has been has broken. So the smell, the stink smell, comes out of the soccer way in the hot of the we start the bit around 4 p.m. The thing will begin to ooze out from soccer way, septic tank. And when people want to shout hallelujah, they'll be covering their moon nose. But I was asking God, how can we be worshiping you under this atmosphere? So one day, as I was meditating in the office, the Lord told me that one of the best hotels in Kaduna has been waiting for me. I said, ah, ah, God, how can you be in? <laughs> what kind of Odoba hotel? Where do we get money to rent a hotel? He said, go there. It's waiting for you. And I went there, true, true. 
And then I met the banqueting manager. And I said, God, what do I say? He said, say you want to rent the place for the whole year. I said, ah, whole oh, year. We don't even talk about one week, whole year. Where do we get the money from? He said, just say, tell her what I told, I'm telling you. So I told the lady, uh, I came in here to come and rent the banqueting hall. He said, banqueting hall. I said, I said, is it free on Sunday? He said, yes. There's no activities on Sundays. It's very, very calm here on Sundays. It's, uh, it's, I said, so that first, first test was passed. I said, well, I want to rent it for the whole year. See, for the for the whole year, oh, we are going to give you, and then we're going to give you a, lot, a, a, a huge discount for renting it every every other Sunday for the whole year. That was how we rented the the hall, and then we moved in there, and those were the place that God started using to convert many souls. Now, the problem was sometimes after I run the program for about a year or two, we would sell cassettes, we would take offering. And then the, 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 the finance was not covering the expense. So sometimes I want to give up. I will say, God, this is the last one we are going to do. We're already getting into debt about this program. People are getting saved, people are getting healed. That was the same program that we held. Somebody's leg grew out. So one day I made up my mind I was going to stop that program because of finance. Three times it happened. As before I was able to tell my wife that we are going to stop the program. I said, let me go and check the post box. And I went and checked the post box, and lo and behold, there's a letter of testimony for somebody that says, Pastor, thank you for victory praise. It was at that program that God healed me last Sunday. And I said, I should quickly send this message to you, that please keep up the good work of the Lord. Uh, I said, God, God told me that, do you want to shut the program down? I said, no, if only for this testimony. So sometimes we are laboring, as I said, maybe there's no, there's no result. But God is not unjust to forget our labor of love. Wherever there's a sowing, there's always a reaping. So this month shall be your month of great harvest. Amen. Those who sow in tears shall come back again reaping with joy. Whatever thing you are sowing in the house of the Lord, whatever thing you are sowing in people's lives, don't give up. God has a record of all your doings, your givings, your prayers, your sacrifices. Even when men don't see it, even when they don't appreciate it, even when they even criticize you for it, keep doing what you ought to do. So this month, let us push until our harvest is completely full and overflowing and is bountiful. My prayer today is that we should all respond and pick up our cross and follow Jesus. This is part of the requirement for a true worship. Don't follow him one day and turn back the next day. The Bible says that he that puts his hand on the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Despite all that is going on right now with COVID or no COVID, let us follow the Lord. Let us follow him. Let us be his friends. Let us develop a life of faithfulness. Be faithful in everything you do. Don't look back. Then also be expecting that your labor is going to be fruitful. God is, himself is a farmer. He knows the importance of harvest. And this month, being the ninth month of the year, is your month of great harvest.